Hey, everybody. So I did, well, first, let's, <laughs> duh, back up. ATC, about those comments. Want to go over a few comments on this video. There are quite a few, and thank you all so much for sharing. So I did the video, maybe you are the reason you can't pay your rent. And basically, it was about building, how, how things work. It's, it's not rocket science. And when you have systems in place or you don't have systems in place, you can fall peril. You experience a lot of perils in life. So this one here, Donna W. said, I saw an expose on single mothers who were struggling to pay rent. Since three got together, bought a house, did modifications, expanded the floor space, three master bedrooms, and a large kitchen. They all worked, helped each other out, with babysitting, etc. It worked well. Everyone had mental, physical, emotional space. They saved money. The mortgage was way cheaper than three separate rentals would have been. The kids had a basement playroom. Awesome idea. And I want to mention, uh, I did, I do recall at the beginning of the pandemic, while wow, you actually had people during the pandemic, young people, they were professionals. And guess what they were doing, people? They bought real estate. They were buying houses. Some of them had apartments. They were buying houses and guess what? Leasing the houses out, weren't even staying in them. Now you have some that bought a house. Everybody stayed in that house and, and guess what? You had two and three people buying houses together. It was business. They had a contract set up. It wasn't be. It wasn't going to be where you could have somebody, a husband, boyfriend moving in. They weren't having all that. They were professional. That's how you're getting ahead. What is this called? The same thing Dr. Claude Anderson has spoken about for years, pooling your resources. These three, they will own this home. I'm sure there's a buyout clause in it. They will own this home as opposed to renting for the next 10 years. They'll have 10 years of equity. And equity beats zero rent, zero investment in a rental any day. Once you rent, you leave, you get your deposit out at best, and, and, and that's it. So this here, life is business. A lot of us don't want to accept it. You're going to learn the hard way. So... And I do want to say congratulations here. I see, let's see, there was a young lady here who is a nurse. Yes, Sydney Taco. She is an LVN. After taxes, monthly, monthly salary is, what, $4,600. I think that's awesome. So congratulations, okay? She has it all figured out. Awesome, awesome. Now, Penny Luke said most of our people are not financially smart or responsible. They're always late paying bills or don't pay their bills at all, have low credit scores, have their priorities screwed up, would rather spend their money than save for a rainy day on stupid stuff. Too busy taking care of the lazy Tyrone's children, mom and them. And when you're on that cycle, you got too many on your paycheck. That's what happens. You on a hamster wheel. Good luck getting off. You might get off, got to jump right back on. Why? It's too many responsibilities on you. Again, lazy Tyrones that, that the children, mom and them, plus themselves. And that's why we can't get ahead. And then the least little bump comes along in life. Guess what? Don't have that rent. And it can easily happen. Easily happen. This should made a comment. They will give Section 8 to the immigrants first. Uh, surprise, not. You already saw you had Americans sleeping on cardboard boxes on the streets up uh, up north. You already saw Americans homeless and who was in the hotels. But give it time. Those immigrants will get here and do as they normally do. Get with their specific communities, their culture, and they'll start to build. Or I'm willing to bet you they will support those that look like them that do bill. So trust and believe. They, if you notice that you notice how they typically do, it's not hard to figure out. It, it, it really is not. So now Diddy Love said everybody is not rich and everybody is not you. Obviously. She said people are struggling out here in the world with jobs and degrees. So please stop shaming people for living. I'm not shaming you for living. I'm shaming people for being stupid. What's living when you have a meager existence? At some point, someone has to sacrifice. And that's the whole point of the video. 
Maybe you are the reason you don't have your rent. So no, it's not shaming. And I did a comment here to her. Love, Didi, uh, Didi love. The shame is, is in not building for yourself, but building for everyone else. So I'm not shaming people for living unless people are living stupidly. And that's the whole thing. The BC really doesn't get it. You're building and supporting everybody else that builds. And then you sit up here and wonder when things get tight, sources get a little bit, you know, get a little, uh, a little strict. Hey, they're doing this to us. Then we had a videos of us talking about how they're keeping me out of a job. What have we been doing all this time? As I said in the video, it's not rocket science. You could have a handful of businesses that are supported by a community. And maybe they can't afford full-time with benefits. They can afford part-time. That could be somebody part-time with some kind of income. It's not rocket science. So the shame is in not building. Then you wonder why, oh, well, you don't have your rent. What, what, what have you been doing collectively? What systems do you have in place? I don't mean the system of dysfunction. We, we got that down packed. What systems economically do you have in place? How's your uh, economy? Don't have one. But busy supporting everybody else's. Anybody in your family can can anybody in your family hire you? Does anyone have a small business? Are you supporting them? Well, yes, someone does have a business in the family, and no, we don't support them. Oh, really? But you will easily in the BC. Support anybody that doesn't look like you because of the jealousy, the self-hatred. You, you, well, they said not scared, you're scared. You're scared it's going to be a success. Not realizing. And what I'm saying, you think the majority of society don't know this? Hello, everybody knows it. The BC thing, you got some kind of secret. Every, you don't have a secret. They know, they know about the dysfunction. You think? This is a community. If you want to thrive, what not to do? Do as the BC does collectively and your community will not thrive. So we're, we become the hashtag what not to do. Again, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, all the rents have gone up a couple hundred dollars. If you have small businesses, any businesses that in your community, even in your family, and supported them, I know it's hard for black folks to understand. But oh my gosh, yet you're going to have to pay. Yeah, they may make some money. That's what you're really worried about because you like poverty. The self-hatred is so strong. But you know what? We don't think that way about other people. That's how you know there's some dis there's some mental dysfunction going on. And so when you sit up and how I don't have my rent. I get in with these places. What are we going to do? Maybe, and I'm speaking collectively, what we should do is stop playing hashtag haterade and stop playing hashtag superfood. It's not hard to figure out. Other communities are doing it all the time. And then you have some people who may, can, can do this here. Watch. It'll be some, some woman who needs the money. Oh, I'm ready to give her dust bucket. Well, I'm not going to have time to do this right here. Go out. Why can't they just give you the money? See the dysfunction. I used to think people that had money when they didn't have any sympathy, they were, I said, oh, they're very cold. No, they knew what I didn't know. I'm I'm late to the party. I'm like, oh my God, that's horrible. Then you start to kind of stand back and see how people operate. And that's why I made the video. That's why you don't have your rent. Diana Prince says, she's one of my day ones. Miss Diana, she says, everyone is in accepting section A anymore. And that is so true. Those waiting lists here in California is 15 Girl, stop to 20 years long. Businesses are going to start getting rid of brick and mortar stores and keep online shopping as a way for people to keep patronizing their businesses. Brad and them know the BC is problematic. Oh, and a liability. Don't get mad at me. I, I get, everybody knows it. They're not just going to tell you. See, they're slick. But they'll just look at you and just smile because they know you quit to, you know, we quit to get out of pocket on you real quick. So someone like me tells you, you want to get a little attitude. That's why they're not worried about you. Brad and them know the BC is problematic. Hell, that's, that's the whole point. Why you don't have your rent? This might be a reason why, you think? Everybody knows the BC and speaking collectively, it is problematic and a liability. Black folks don't want the black folks to have more than that. 
It has always been this way. And that's why I'm at, that's exactly that. And that's why men don't know how to rent. See that per wonder, what is I'm going to do? Figure it out. That's why, and, and this is, this is it. Other communities already know this. People choose what they want. Other communities already know this. They already know. And we want to continue on. So that's why I mean you don't have the rent. You haven't built anything. You don't support those that build. You're afraid that they're going to have something. Uh-uh, you're going to have more than me. Your credit score might get above three. I ain't trying to hear all that. And that's your downfall. The hater rate, the self-hate, and the jealousy. So we would rather, because it's very obvious, continue in this way, just passing it down, popping it in, shaking your head, looking stupid, thinking somebody going, oh, look at the BC, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to them? The same thing. Continue to be problematic and a liability and afraid someone's going to have something, crabs in a barrel bucket. So that's why many of them don't have their rent. Can't work together. But they can sure go to somebody else's store that doesn't look like them and get humiliated, get profiled, and all you're going to do is curse and get mad up under your breath and be back in there next week. So for many of us, hate to say it, sometimes poverty is a choice, you see. Making decisions every day. Make an executive decision to determine your future, not only your future, but your children's future. Don't want to stop. Don't want to stop and think. We really are afraid of some green, of some money going from one black hand to another. And that's fine. Keep on doing that. But guess what? That's why many can't pay their rent. You want somebody else to save you. You are a fool to think somebody else is going to put you above their culture because that's just stupid. They're not that dumb. Why would you put some the, the care and well-being of someone else's child above your own? You must be stupid. Fool, that's you. That's your DNA. You don't get it? That's your DNA walking around here. Jewel Jordan said, have you and your family. Get a job. Get in school. Join the military. Military is going to take discipline. And you already know some of us aren't ready for that. Girl on fire says, I got news for her. And she's referring to the thing about Section A. Again, I've heard about a five and ten year waiting list. Good luck with that. But Girl on fire says, I got news for her. A lot of people don't want Section A and not taking it. How about don't have any children until you can afford them and spend that time focusing on going to school, get education, learning a trade and investing your money girl on fire we're talking to the bc that's the thing about it we don't want to acknowledge our mistakes we don't want to acknowledge that hey we can't afford these children the section a wait list cannot accommodate everybody we can't afford these kids we keep on ha- it's the same old thing it's like taking a match to some wood to a little frame house and wonder what's going to happen. Well, let, the last one I did, it caught on fire. And each fool keep on, here's your frame house. And here's your little bungalow. Keep putting the match to the wires, catching on fire. You can't be this slow. Focus on going to school. They can't even focus on get, uh, being able to read. Pass math class in Baltimore. Have you seen the results? But see, these are the things we don't want to do. We don't want to stand back and look at the problems that we have and how to go ahead and address those issues. So what happened is easier because people are lazy. They don't want to think. It's easier to keep on doing what you're doing. Just wag your head. And now sitting up, I can't afford my rent. Oh, what is I'm going to do? Uh, perish in poverty. Succumb. Keep being a victim of your circumstances. Being a victim of your of, of ignorance. So it's hard out there. You you don't skip it. No surprise. And I wish the best. But at some point, you're going to have to get off your, if you want to go ahead. That's why I said the, the black community is a scam. I don't want to hear about no Black Lives Matter. Oh, I don't hear about no We Shall Overcome. Been singing that song and kill each other out more than a clan. I don't want to hear about it. It's all a scam. Why they don't have their rent? Uh, having a whole lot of children that they can't afford, keep on doing it. Don't want to build for everybody else but your own. Don't want to support them because of the jealousy. You're afraid someone's going to look like you. And basically, they are in love with white supremacy and support it. Try to turn it down and see what happens. And then 
Doing the things that just tear down your own, don't even realize it, or you do realize it and you just ignore it. That's the way things are done. How life was in 1965 is not going to work now. What your mom and grandmama did, good luck with that. They didn't even have internet then. So a lot of people don't have the rent. We don't want to stop and analyze and address problematic behavior. We're going to keep on doing what we want to do as a stiff neck people, and that's why you don't have your rent. You be for everybody else but you. That's why you don't have your rent. You support everybody else but you. That's why you don't have your rent. And it's every time you look around, you got some mega dollars. What's that thing on that little church song? Mom, how you going to pay your rent? Oh, your money spent. And was, you spend your money on a whole bunch of bullshit. Don't want to just hold some money, sit down and think. No. So you can go on and wait for the work it out. Work it out. You can go on and wait for the work it out. Unfortunately, many of you are going to find yourself completely out, out on the street. A-S-S out. That, that, that's how it's going to work out. It, ain't no miracle going to come. No apartment, no house going to drop down from the sky by next week to save you. So why you don't have the rent? It's the mindset and it's the self-hatred and the jealousy. And then it's the ignorance that this group keeps on going willfully. The, the ignorance. Keep on going in willfully, doing the same old dumb stuff over and over again is why a lot of us don't have our rent. We don't have any systems in place, your own economy. You're in the mercy of everybody else. And so once they take care of your, their own, they'll go ahead and give you some scrubs, that's, give you the little crumbs that's left. The B.C., Number one crime snatcher, and I'm out. That's why you don't have your rent.